I'm, I'm delighted to be here. I, I've come at absolutely the right time of year. Cherry are. blossoms are in bloom. And I mean, this, there's been such a, a friendliness of greeting here. Uh, after having gone through some fairly troubled parts of the Northeast, it's almost like an oasis to come here. The only thing I have to fear is the, de is the in inventive driving that people have shown uh, uh, on the roads of Shillong. Are you planning to write uh, something keeping uh, in mind Shillong as the subject? I've been told that uh, my next book should begin with the letters SH, so maybe a shootable boy. Shillong is, uh, I come here as a visitor, not as an author, but something may well come out of it. After all, a far greater predecessor, Tagore, spent time in Shillong, and as a result of it, he wrote a poem called A Letter from Shillong. He wrote a novel, uh, Shesha Kapita, the last poem, which was inspired by Shillong. So let's hope something does come out of it. So how long it will take for yes. a suitable girl yes. to come out? Well, it's been a very long gestation. And as long as I don't get sidetracked by going to literary festivals, maybe a year or two. But if I allow myself to go to too many literary festivals, it could take as many as 20 years. So from Calcutta to Northeast, I mean, yeah. you are born in Calcutta and you have affiliations here. Uh, don't you think that the literature in the Northeast has not been heard nationally yes. and internationally? And what are the reasons? Part of it is because even in India, the Northeast is seen as being a little bit out on a limb. It's because of the geographical question of the chicken neck. Had it all been one country, of course, it would have flowed. But now there is, you know, Bangladesh and Nepal and Bhutan there. So that's part of the geographical reason. The second reason is that it's been treated for reasons to do with tribality and raciality as being somehow not mainstream India. Also religion, not, you know, Christianity. It is ridiculous that uh, a part of our, our country should be treated as somewhat uh, distant psychologically from the main body of India. There's absolutely no reason for that to continue and I hope that with you know, people who push the cause of uh, literature in the Northeast, um, this will change, especially through translation. Well, we have seen that uh, these days uh, more people are into uh, into digital media. Even books are published digitally. So this hard copy books actually the uh, culture is coming down. I agree with that, and also you can say uh, with uh, well, I didn't want to anticipate your question. It is true that this place is well known through photographs, through the national parks, Kaziranga and all that, and of course through music, as with the Hornbill Festival and so on. But literature has so far not yet got sufficiently known as it deserves to be in the rest of India, let alone the rest of the world. But do you think that with uh, this digitalization of books and all, somewhere this uh, charm of reading hard copies, uh, printed hard copies is losing? I don't think it's a very big trend in, the, in India as a whole, uh, as, as much as it is in the rest of the world. But yes, for me, I like scrolling on my books, I like holding them up, I like spilling coffee or wine on them, and I like cutting them in bits so that I can read them. I'll show you an example if you want. It's here. Um, oh yeah, yeah. A friend of mine wrote a very fat three-volume book called the Northeast Trilogy, but I just cut it up and chopped it up so that I could read it. And they're going to lug like a huge book around. I always encourage people, when they get a suitable boy, to cut it up into readable fascicles. But I give them that advice on page 1100, when it's too late for them to do so. So that's how I read it. Good. I mean, like, the book is that fat. Who has the energy to lug something like that I around? hope that your next book will be thinner than this. If it's not thinner than this? Oh, well, I hope so too. Some of my... 
Some of, book, some of my books, my poetry, is as thin as that. It's only my wretched novels that turn out to be fat. Okay, uh, what will be your suggestion to the budding writers in, the, in this part of the region especially? Well, um, get on with it. I mean, quite often people say, oh, I have a book within me, but I've got to plan it, and it's got to be perfect. It won't be perfect. Write a few paragraphs. Just start somewhere. No harm in it being a rough draft. Just start. Write about what you know in the first instance. If you're a poet, write about what you feel. Try to write clearly. And remember, there's no harm in failing. There is a lot of harm in not trying. There's a lot of reading culture dwindling here. Yes, I suppose so. so Video games, movies, etc. So that is some how, arts come, some are, yeah. That is affecting the writers. That's true. It is. It's affecting everything. But that's the way the world goes, you know, things change. Now, I think this is the last question. No, yeah, something the political. Uh, I read that you are a little relieved after 2024 election, Lok Sabha election. And you also were critical about uh, government coming down on Arundhati Roy. What is your uh, view of freedom of expression? Well, one of the great things about our country, as opposed to say China or Russia and so on, is that we are free to express ourselves. And we do not want a situation where more and more pressure is put not only on writers, not only on educational institutions, on cultural institutions, on journalists, or upon journalists through the owners of the media houses to not speak their minds. We are free individual citizens and we must remain so.